Hey YouTube, it's Matt with Limbs Reptiles. Today we're going to talk about shipping your animals. It's a really important topic and we're going to cover a few of those things that I think are a myth out there to maybe help you uh, do this the most economical way possible, which is hard nowadays because, you know, I mean, no matter which camp you're in, you can blame whatever politician you want, but everything has gone up in cost, including shipping cost. So our shipping bill has gone through the roof. Uh, it's just part of the game, right? Uh, so is your milk, so is your eggs, so is your snake shipping. So... A couple things that we do here when it comes time to ship. First of all, mind your weather. Some people push that envelope a little too much. Uh, the reason I don't, I'd rather wait and mind the weather is because let's say I'm like, ah, oh, screw it, it'll be okay, and I ship a snake when the low's 15 degrees. Yep, there's a heat pack. Yes, it's going to be inside most of the time. Yes, theoretically, it should be good. But what if it isn't? What if it's not good? And then that snake dies because I chose to ship it when it was 15 degrees. Who's that on? It's on my shoulders. The snake didn't choose to go in the box. The shipping company didn't choose to make me ship it. As a matter of fact, if you read the shipping like company's information, they'll tell you not to do that. So, I like to wait on the weather. I look for a, a low on the night it's traveling, okay? That's what we're looking at to be about, you know, I prefer it to be no lower than, or sorry, yeah, no lower than 40. We've gone as low as 38. That's important to us too. You gotta think about where you live. If I was doing a hub to hub shipping and I personally took it and handed it to the hub and the hub put it on a plane and flew it, it came off, I probably wouldn't be as concerned. That's not how it works where I live. I take it, I give it to a place, it's a FedEx, but it's not a, a hub. It's a FedEx shipping center. It is a, a hub here technically, but it ain't where the airport lands. And it's not close to the airport. They're going to take that box. They're going to put it on a plane. That's going to happen at 6.30 p.m. They're going to drive it approximately two hours and 25 minutes to the airport in Kansas City. So that means by the time that snake has arrived at that airport, it is now it's going to be in the back of a box truck, not exactly air conditioned, uh, probably about nine because that truck ain't going to go real fast, right? So let's say it gets there at 9 o'clock, it's going to have offloading, all those things. God knows how long it's going to set before that plane leaves. So I do get myself concerned with the weather to make sure we give our animals the best chance at shipping. So how do we ship? Well, you take a box. Here's where the dirty secret comes to you. We use Reptiles to you. There's other companies. There's, I think, Redline is one of them. Ship your Reptiles. Uh, reptiles Direct, I think, used to be one. I don't know if they're still around or not. Whoa! Here's what I'm going to tell you. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Okay, I don't care which company you use, and you shouldn't either. And someone's going to get on here and say, well, wait, wait, but wait, but wait, but wait. This company over here offers insurance. Well, it's all well and good. Read the fine print on that. What you're going to find is if you ship an animal, and it goes there, unless it dies by a fault of the carrier, they're not going to insure that. So as long as they take that animal, it arrives when it's supposed to, right, then uh, they're not going to insure it. They're also going to... I don't know how they're going to figure the value of it because they're probably not going to take your word for it or my word or anybody else's word on that matter. But, um, so I don't worry too much about the insurance. That's part of my risk. If I ship an expensive animal, you know, it is what it is, right? Uh, fortunately, in all the shipping we've done, I can tell you straight up, and I, I'm the reason to lie to you, we've had exactly one not arrive alive. And I think I know what caused it. It was cool here. We used had to use a heat pack. It was going to be warmer where it was going, but they were going to be picking up in the morning. Uh, I'm pretty sure somebody tried to be really nice to us and think, oh, this is a, an animal that needs warmth, and stuck it by a, a heat source with the heat source already in the box and probably overheated the thing. But, you know, that sucked. Uh, so what do you do in that situation? It's really simple. I gave my customer an option because it certainly wasn't his fault. And I said, hey, man, I have another one. I can either send you that one or I can refund you in full, including your shipping cost. He elected to have the other one sent. I did not charge him for shipping again because, again, that's not your customer's fault. So how do we go about a shipping day? Well, the first thing we do is we reach out to people, make sure they're ready to receive. We never do a surprise shipment. Um, if we know they're ready to receive the animal, the next step we do is we check the animal. This time I went out and bought shipping labels beforehand. Whoops. But we always check the animals prior to sending them out. We actually give them an inspection. And like today, we have a bunch to send out, actually more than what you're seeing here. Uh, however, one of them has got a slight little bit of a, of a skin irritation going on. So we want to hold that for a little while, sit on it and look and make sure everything's okay before we send that animal out. We never want to send an animal out that we know has any type of issue. We want to get past that issue first uh, or, or just before we send it. It needs to be eating, it needs to be healthy. I don't mind sending an animal that's starting to go into shed or something like that. We'll talk about how you do that 
but we're not going to send one that's got any kind of issue going on, whether that be, oh my God, the world's biggest issue is mites. Everybody hates those things. Uh, we absolutely try to never send it has a mite issue, uh, whether it has, like in this instance, a little bit of a skin irritation, probably from, honest to God, the baby's outgrown this tub. We had to move it up to a bigger tub. We think that was a cause of that to get that cleared up or, or whatever it may be. We're always going to make sure the animal's healthy to ship. Once we know the animal's healthy, we have customers said they're ready to receive, we always recommend hold it hub. Okay, I will ship it directly to somebody's house if they choose, but I cannot control that FedEx driver. They're supposed to make that the first delivery when we select the most expensive shipping platform, which you should always select. I know there's two overnight ones. Make sure yours is priority, okay? Um, it's a small price to pay for a little bit of extra money to make sure shit's hopefully done right. So if they take it to their house, there's no way I can guarantee that that driver ain't going to do something stupid. Uh, I will get a notification on my phone the minute that thing arrives, or I will be checking, and then I will contact them to make sure that they have it. If they are there when they get it, pick it right up, and they tell me, yep, I got it, I have them check it right then, the things are good, okay. If not, that'll be a case-by-case -case basis. Arrival at Hub, since I know it's at the Hub, I know it's sitting inside, uh, we are going to guarantee that thing arrives alive. The reason to say case by case basis on the other is if I text them, hey, that animal's there, I don't hear back for an hour and a half because it's sitting on a porch or hanging on a mailbox or FedEx put it to the wrong house or whatever. Some of that's out of my control. That's why we hold it home. So what are you going to get from a shipping company? We just buy our equipment or boxes from one. And it doesn't matter, you can have a box, like in this case, from uh, Reptiles to you, and I could use Redline to buy my label. The, the label company really isn't doing anything, guys. You're going to be boxing it, you're going to be putting it in there, you're going to be taking it to FedEx. All you're really doing is paying a fee to use their license and get their discount for having all those multitudes of shipping going on at the same time. That's what the shipping companies really provide, plus they sell equipment like the boxes. I personally find it easy, if you're shipping one reptile in a blue moon, just buy a kit and be done with it, okay? If you're going to be shipping a bunch of reptiles, it is much cheaper, at least with kind of like ship your reptile, or sorry, reptiles to you, to buy a set of boxes, a set of bags, all that stuff separate in bulk. So that's what we do. We have our 7x7 seven seven, seven boxes here. Simply take, fold them in, fold them in, fold them in. Take your tape, which is never where you're supposed to be. Get that set up right here. Yoink, yoink, yoink. Problem solved. Tape that box. If it's really going to be warm out, you can run some vent holes if you want. Look, if it's going to be kind of cool out like now, you really don't need to poke air holes in there. See those holes? You can hear me talk. You can see light through there. Look in there. See light. Hi, fingers. These things aren't airtight, okay? That is a complete, you know, misnomer. These aren't, you know, the... <laughs> It's like, you're going to get two different sizes of foam. Big foam, little foam. Big foam, top and bottom. Just drop one in there. Problem solved. Little foam is going to be your side pieces. Don't let your wife find out you have four side pieces. They don't appreciate that. For the record, not the cause of divorce number one. It would have been a lot more fun if it was. Uh, so you put these in here and they kind of fit like a puzzle. So they're going to be a little bit short. That's what you want. You can put these in wrong. You'll realize if you do that, if shit is not lining up or fitting right, it's because you put them in there wrong. They're not a perfect square. Like, there. That's not wrong. It's just a tight fit. Bam. There we go. There we go. One last one. This would be wrong. See how it sticks up too high? That ain't going to work. Ah. There you can see though it looks tight. It's really not. These are all movable. So then the next thing you're going to have eventually it'll be this. But before we get here, this is not how we want to ride. I use this stuff right here. You can tell people use newspaper, whatever. This, <coughs> hold on, my cameraman just get over a little COVID, guys. Not really. He's got a cold. I don't know. He's got a baby, so he's always sick with some shit. If you have children, just plan on being sick all the time. Uh, they bring home diseases. Kids, I'll tell you. This is just teddy bear stuff you can find at the craft store. I buy it by a big old bag. This bag will last you literally a long time. Throw some of that in there, yeah. And what that's going to do is provide a little bit of extra insulation. Uh, it's also gonna give your snake a place to ride, okay? The next thing you're going to do, we're not going to do this in the moment. And the reason we're not gonna do this in the moment is simply because I will not put the snake in this box until right before it goes out. That's actually be Caleb doing that in the morning. I'll make the box a setup for him, have everything laid out. He'll put the snake in there and ship them. 
heat packs, okay? Don't open this until you're ready to actually use it, but like five minutes before. So what Caleb will do is he'll open these heat packs in the morning, lay them there. He'll then go back to the snakes. He'll come up and double check. Hey, are these things getting warm? They feel good? Yeah, they do. Um, then you're gonna take your heat pack, you're gonna stick it right there. Once it's on there, you're going to tape it with the tape. I like to tape my heat pack, make sure the little red line's sticking up. I always forget, I actually always read these every time before I do it because I'm an idiot. I wanna make sure I don't put the vent holes the wrong way that can cause you problems. So you put it there, I like to tape it at the corners. Do not skimp on your tape. Tape will not stick to the styrofoam very well. Okay, not very good tape source. So you're gonna to wanna to stick it to itself. So what you're going to do is run a full length of tape around that edge, boom. A full length of tape around this edge, boom. And if you still don't think that's enough, like on a bigger box, you can run one on each side. You can make a full square if you want, but you wanna make sure this is pretty secure. Give these a little shake. That'll help activate them. And then this is going to go right in here with that taped on it. So pretend that's on the underneath side, right? So you can see it's gonna be heating that box really nice. The bag, which will contain the snake. Open up, sesame, bam. <laughs> Drop your snake in, right? Fold it. Don't trust this tie. I zip tie it. Make sure the snake's down there. Put a zip tie here. Zip tie it down and let's tie this too. I like the zip ties better, much more secure. I don't have to be a Boy Scout about knots. So how does this bag go in the box? You can do this wrong. So if we're running heat on top, Never put your heat on the bottom. You can run heat on the side if you wish. I like the heat on the top. Just in case your tape fails and this falls down, then it's going to fall into the bag like this. That could put too much heat on the snake. That's problematic. This should not be in contact with the animal. So we're going to make a little pocket, okay? We're going to put the snake down in that pocket. And if you need to pull some of this out, you can. Then we're gonna fold the top of that bag on there. So our zip tied knotted part is on the top. So even if this falls off, that zip tie knotted area is going to keep it off of the animal. So we're never gonna be in contact with the animal, even if our tape fails. It's just a little safety measure. If you just go dropping this in there and the snake's at the top, you can have a problem. So this goes in, this folds over, kind of acts like a protection the snake's down in there. So that's kind of how we're gonna pack our bag. The next thing that's gonna go in would be, well, you have this top panel on, heat in, snake in, you're done. We put a sheet right here, some basic information about the animal itself which I'll prep tonight, uh, or Caleb and I will, I don't know, we'll get it all done. That's gonna set there. And then you just close the box up. And then you're gonna tape it again. Boom, boom, boom. I'm not gonna do that because it'll be a pain in the ass to get off. And then you're good to go. If you really wanna follow the strictest labeling procedures, you are supposed to put the Latin name, the common name and the number in here. Look, I don't ever do that. Uh, <laughs> I've never had FedEx complain. I will now. If you're shipping things that are venomous, or, or something like that, then A, you shouldn't be using FedEx, and B, you do need to label that that way then. That's more what that's about. FedEx actually used to carry venomous, I think way back in the day. They no longer do because uh, people would try to be cheap. Or they'd write something like ball python there, ship a cobra. Don't be that guy. Don't do that because we can lose our right to ship, which would suck ass in a killer industry. Whew, it's a lot of information, right? Shipping labels, um, they go on the outside of the box. Once you tape that box down, you're going to put an envelope, a label in an envelope like this. If you don't, a little rattlesnake buzzing. If you don't have any, don't fret. They'll have these for you at your shipping center. They're free. Stick it on there. Stick it down. Max as an extra sticker. If you want to be really cool, I always try to stick these so they're not covering up the pretty box art. So it looks just like this. Nice little package. Off it goes to its new home. There is an app for FedEx. Get that app. That way you can track your shipments. Another thing you need to do is on your shipping label, which I'm not going to show you our shipping labels because they contain people's private information, their address and things like that on them. Um, you want to, there will be a tracking number on there. Send your customer that tracking number so they can follow along with what's happening with the animal as it's arriving or whatnot. There's two ways to do that. One, you can sit there and type it out your thumbs. Two, it says tracking and has a number on there. You can just snap a picture and send to them. Uh, I usually, I've done it both ways. They both work just fine. They can copy the text off one or whatever. It doesn't matter, but make sure and send them that information. All right, Kurt. Oh, one more thing. This size box, appropriate for single ball python. Bigger boxes, appropriate for two to three ball pythons. It's a nine by nine by nines. That's the two shipping boxes we typically use. 
If we need to ship way more than that, we're going to use a bigger box. But that's what we get away with 99% of the time. So, Kurt, any questions? No. Caleb, you're over there. Any questions? Nope. Caleb, how does shipping go for you when you have to drop this crap off? Which is why we can ship on Tuesdays now because Caleb's here. Actually pretty perfect because on my way I pick up like McDonald's or Burger King during my lunch break. So Caleb is saying buy more snakes so he has a better excuse to pick up fattening food because he wants to work on looking like me one day. Yeah. And the only way he's going to do that is eat more McDonald's and Burger King. I mean, and then we can start comparing belly Panda shots. Express right there. Oh, man. Oh, man. You are going to look like me one day, <laughs> brother. He's going to look that. That young kid metabolism shit is going to wear out and he's going to look <laughs> like this. He keeps eating that shit. All right. That's all we got. We will see you all next time.